Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I put together 12 spring DIYs that I think y'all gonna absolutely love. So let's go ahead and get started. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. All right guys, this first project is gonna be so cute and so simple. I'm gonna be using some wood knobs I had in my stash and also some floral that I thrifted as well. First, I want to antique the wood knobs because they just a little bit bright for me. So I'm just gonna add some antiquing wax to them to give them a more aged look. Then I'm gonna cut three sprigs of greenery. I'm gonna take some hot glue. I'm gonna add hot glue to the little screw hole that is in the knob. And then I'm going to put my sprig of greenery in it. It is that simple. Now, I think the heavier knobs would be better. These wooden ones were a little bit light. So if you're using a lighter knob, you wanna make sure your greenery doesn't come up too high so it's not constantly falling over. Um, but it's that simple. And this was just such a cute project. It came out even better than I had imagined. I actually loved it so much that I went in my stash and I found some porcelain knobs. So that way I could make some more of these. And the porcelain knobs were a lot heavier. And that's when I realized the heavier knobs definitely work a lot better. So definitely look through your stash, see if you have any little knobs you're not using and try this project. So quick, so simple, so easy, and absolutely beautiful. There are always plenty of frames to find at the thrift store. And I like to specifically look for thick wooden vintage frames. And anytime I find wooden spoons, I always grab them. So we're gonna be using those two thrift store items for this project. A lot of times with these vintage frames, I actually love the back of the frame more than the front. And that is the case with this one. So I'm actually going to turn the back of the frame into the front of the frame. It did not have a piece of glass or a piece of cardboard backer on this frame. So I just have a thick piece of cardboard that I cut to the size that I need. And using some spray adhesive, I am attaching a piece of drop cloth to my cardboard. Now, since I am going to be using the front of the frame as the back, there's no lip or ridge or anything for me to set my cardboard into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hot glue the drop cloth to the front of the frame and that'll keep it in place. I wanted some very tiny bird eggs for this project. However, I could not find any at the store that was small enough. So I just decided to make my own. I'm gonna use IOD air dry clay and all you do is just kind of roll it up in the palm of your hand to an egg shape. And then you're just going to let it dry. It was so easy and these turn out absolutely adorable. Once my clay was dry, I wanted to add some tiny speckles to the egg to really make them look realistic. So I have a little bit of beige paint and a little bit of gray paint and I'm just lightly dipping my toothbrush into the paint and just flicking it onto the eggs. And this worked perfectly. They truly looked like little tiny bird eggs when I was done. Now I wanna create some little tiny nests inside my spoon so I can put my little tiny eggs in them. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the spoon and just a little bit of moss. I do want it to make, look like a nest, but I wanna be able to see the outer edge of my spoon so it's not taking a lot of moss at all. Then I hot glued my eggs to the nest. Now I'm going to take my three spoons and add them to my framed art piece that I created earlier. I thrifted this hat because I absolutely love the shape of it, the texture of it, and the color of it. And I knew that it would be perfect to add floral to. I'm just gonna take this lavender that I purchased from Walmart and I'm gonna cut sprigs off of it and just weaving it in the basket and also with the help of the hot glue, I'm just going to attach it 
around the hat until I like the way that it looks. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. You can just keep adding until the, you like the way that it looks. You could also add ribbon or fabric. I just decided to stick with just the lavender sprigs. I love the way that this project turned out. It was so quick and easy and the perfect thing to add to any decorative hook in your home. I thrifted these large finials. I'm pretty sure they came from a bed set, but anytime I see stuff like this at the thrift store, I absolutely pick it up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the screw and now you have a big, huge piece of home decor and you can leave it as is, but I'm not going to. I wanna give it a beautiful, chippy, old finish. I have been dying to try this Acadiana pear color in Fusion's milk paint, but first I'm going to take Fusion's raw silk and I'm just going to dab it randomly around the finials. Just try not to think about it too much. Just dab it a little bit here and there, and then I'm going to let this dry. If you have not used milk paint before, it comes in a powder form and you add one part water to one part powder and then mix it together. Once your paint is thoroughly mixed, then you are ready to paint your piece. And I only did one coat of paint on here. I felt like this color had really good coverage and I really wanted some of those colors underneath to come through. So I felt like one coat of paint was the right choice. And once I get the paint on, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to apply a little bit of heat to this. What happens when you use milk paint and you apply heat? it makes it chip and crackle even more. It will do it on its own, but the heat kind of forces it along. Oh my gosh, y'all. I am just loving milk paint so much. Look at this. So it did not chip where the white is, but because I only did one coat of paint, you can kind of see that white coming through. It's given a different color. You can wet distress it or use sandpaper, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to rub it with my hand and let that chippiness come off wherever it wants to. Then I'm going to seal it up with some Fusion Hemp Oil and these finials are done. If you love the green in my last project, you're going to want to check out my colors of the month club because in March is going to be all about the greens. You get four fusion paint samples. And if you love milk paint as well, then you're going to want to check out the milk paint plus club because you're going to get your four samples plus two milk paints to try every single month. And I will link both of these in the description for y'all. I thrifted this piece because I love the shape of it. I loved the look of it. You could use it as a piece of decor or as a bookend. It has this hole in the middle that I am assuming was for a tea light. I always thrift succulents when I find them for a good price. I probably paid 50 cents for this at the bins and it was originally $15 at Michael's. I don't want the succulents in this container, so I'm simply just going to pull them out. That way I can reuse them on this piece. I do want to permanently attach the succulents to the wood. So I just have my drill with a drill bit about the same size as the stems of the succulent. And I'm just gonna drill holes into the wood and I'm going to place them in an arrangement that I like. And once I've figured out the arrangement and have all the holes, I'm going to go back with some Gorilla Glue and add it to the stems. That way you will not be able to pull these succulents out. They will stay as is. And now it is a beautiful, unique piece of home decor using two items that I've thrifted. I hope y'all are enjoying today's video so far. I just want to take a quick minute to tell y'all about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a company who I chose to host my website and it has everything you need to grow your business online. One of my favorite features is the built-in 
email marketing campaigns. These are so important to your online business and Squarespace just makes it so easy to use. Every time I get new product in, I always send out an email campaign and it makes it really easy to add in your products. The first thing that show up is the newest stuff that you listed. You just add those in and it puts in all the descriptions, all of the links. And it is that simple. It literally takes me probably about five minutes to do my email campaigns on Squarespace. And they also have lots of templates that you can choose from and customize. So if you think you are ready to take your business to the next level and start your own website, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs. And they are giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs. And I will have everything linked in the description for y'all. This is going to be my spin on the tin can project that everybody has been doing. I think it's absolutely perfect for spring and a great little hanger to put some cute little florals in. So of course you want to start off with a clean tin can and then you want to remove the bottom of your can. I just used a regular, you know, can opener from the store. It worked fine. And then you're going to want to take a rubber mallet and you're just going to lightly hit it. I'm not hitting it very hard. It doesn't take much effort at all to do this. And I just put a piece of wood under my can. And as you can see, it's closing up perfectly with very little effort. Now I want to drill a hole in each side so I can add a hanger. I just have, you know, a regular round drill bit on my drill and I'm going to drill a hole in each side and make sure you have a piece of wood under your can. That way you don't drill a hole into your work surface. I've seen these cans finished off in so many different ways. I decided to add drop cloth fabric to mine because, you know, I just love drop cloth. And I used a spray adhesive because I did want some of those ridges to show. So I just put the spray adhesive on and then put my drop cloth over it. Now I'm cutting a seam in the back and I'm just going to hot glue that down. The excess fabric on the top, I am just going to tuck into my can and I'm going to glue it down in a minute. I'm gonna just leave it as is for now. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess and I'm going to hot glue it together so that way it doesn't open up or anything. I need to put a hole in my drop cloth where I have a hole in my tin can. So I am just using my fabric scissors to poke a hole. Now, after putting this project together, I realize that putting a hole in your tin can isn't 100% necessary. You can just simply hot glue your ribbon or string or whatever you decide to use to your tin can. So if you wanna skip the step of putting a hole in your tin can, that is 100% fine. I always keep the hemmed edges of my drop cloth in case I want to use it on little projects like this. I am hot gluing one piece at the bottom and then I'm going to hot glue another piece all around the top. I'm gonna have my seam in the back with my other seam so you really won't be able to see it. But I just love the little extra detail that this provides. I thought a beaded hanger would look so perfect with the drop cloth. I think it already looks really cute, especially after you add some floral to it, but I'm going to take it one step further and add a transfer from the Iron Orchid Designs Brocott Transfer Book. Y'all, it comes off so easy on this drop cloth. Even the tiny little antennas on this butterfly transfers perfectly. I purchased a set of three wooden containers at a garage sale for $3. Now, they look okay as is, but we are gonna take it to the next level using the Olive Crest mold. I wanna use the mold that is in the center. It kind of looks like a little label or a little frame, and I think it is going to be perfect to apply to the two square boxes. So I'm gonna make two of these labels using the IOD air dry clay and then using Gorilla Glue, I'm going to glue them to the boxes. 
Now these are glued on right away because they easily hold their shape. However, on the longer tray, I want to use these kind of more frilly pieces on the side of the mold. This one is more pliable. So I find with the more pliable movable molds, I let I like to let them dry in place and then glue them down. I just find it so much easier. So honestly, it just depends on the project and on the mold if I let the clay dry before I glue it down or if I glue it down right away. So I'm just taking these two pieces of clay and I'm going to put them exactly like I want them to look on here and I'm going to let them dry and stiffen them up and then glue them. That way they stay exactly how I want them to be. My clay and my glue has dried overnight and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. I really want to add some white wax to the entire piece. I want to apply a stamp to the little labels that I created on the boxes. I'm going to be using IOD's letterpress stamp. You get three different fonts in this stamp and they are the size that are perfect to embellish any piece. And I want to show y'all something with the thin mount. If you are stamping, I highly recommend ordering two thin mounts, one to keep in a large size and one to cut down so that you have all kinds of different sizes of thin mounts to use for all your different projects. It's going to make stamping so much easier. So I'm just going to use the number one and the number two and the black IOD ink and I'm going to just apply one stamp on each label and I think it's just the perfect little detail, the perfect little embellishment for this little wooden box set. I thrifted this metal wire basket. I'm pretty sure it's to hold golf balls, but I really like the look of it and I knew that I could do something with it. But it is just a little bit too shiny and new looking for me. So I'm gonna take my antiquing wax and I am just going to rub it over the entire bucket. It really didn't take long to do this. However, if you had some brown spray paint and just wanted to spritz it on here, you would most likely get the same effect, but I didn't have any. So I'm just using what I have. Now this definitely is a little bit more my style. Now I'm going to take this basket that I also thrifted. I always pick up these size baskets when I find them because they are perfect to put stuff in like this metal basket. And now I'm gonna take it and stage it and y'all are not even gonna believe how great this is gonna look. I love thrifting kitchen items and I just cannot pass up these old pans. I'm thinking the ephemeral melange transfer will be perfect with this. If y'all haven't seen the ephemeral melange transfer, it comes with all these different cute little labels and all kind of different shapes and sizes that are perfect for little projects like this. So I just added it to my pan and of course, it needs some feet because everything is cuter with feet. These are just some little spindle cutoffs that I am gluing to the bottom of my pan. And that is it. This project is done and ready to be styled. I pulled all of these different wood items out of my stash, so I'm gonna take them all and do something with them today. The first thing I wanna do is take these two matching candlesticks and then these two matching square bowls. The wood tone is almost exactly the same on the both of them, so I feel like they are a match made in heaven. I'm gonna take my Gorilla Glue, you could also use wood glue, and I'm just going to attach these two together. Now when using Gorilla Glue or wood glue, you definitely want to just leave it and let it dry for 24 hours and then you'll have permanent adhesion. And then I'm just going to attach the two pieces together. I always like to do it upside down so I can make sure it is in the exact center of the piece. And that is it. These are done. Let's move on to the next wood project. 
I'm not going to be putting these two pieces together, but I do want to paint them both with the Gustavian white milk paint. So for the little bowl, I'd want to do a little bit more of an aged white wash. If you've been watching my channel, you've seen me do this before. So I'm just going to paint the bowl and then I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe it back off. And that's going to give me a beautiful old looking white wash look. For this piece, I wanted full coverage, so I added a few coats of milk paint. And what I love about milk paint is even if it doesn't chip and crackle, it still gives you a beautiful flat texture to it. And to bring back a little bit of the wood tones, I just lightly distressed it with some sandpaper. Once my pieces are dry, I'm just going to seal in my paint using Fusion's Hemp Oil. I'm just going to brush it on, let it dry for about 30 minutes, and then wipe off all of the excess. I really like using this for my milk paint because it not only seals the piece and conditions the wood, but once you wipe it off, you get that nice flat finish that I love. Now I'm going to attach the whitewash bowl to this wood candlestick. Guys, always pick up wood candlesticks when you find them. You can use them as candlesticks. You can use them to make other things. You can paint them. You can leave them as is. They are just so great for so many DIY projects. And for this candlestick, I have something special to put on top of it. Look at this beautiful, large bird's nest. I think it's so pretty. It has these little picks of greenery in it. So you could just put it on top of here, but I actually want to glue it. So I'm going to take some hot glue and glue it on here. And I think this came out so beautiful. This might be my favorite of all these little wood projects that I did, but definitely leave me a comment below and let me know what was your favorite. I mixed up a good bit of the Gustavian white milk paint, so I wanted to use everything that I had. So I went back in my stash. I grabbed three more projects that I am going to paint with milk paint. I'm not going to videotape me doing it. I'm just going to show y'all the after. Right, guys that is the end of today's video i hope you were inspired i hope you enjoyed today's project please leave a comment below let me know what was your favorite one and do not forget that all of the paint paint brushes iod and even home decor is available on my website juliesdesignsandsigns.com and if you are interested in starting your own website y'all make sure to go check out squarespace.com slash juliesdesignsandsigns and they are giving my viewers 10% off and I will have everything linked in the description for y'all. So once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope y'all were inspired. I will see y'all next week with another amazing DIY video. Y'all have a wonderful day.